Hello again, and welcome back to The Broken Past. Recently, I bought a broken Nintendo Switch Lite on eBay to try to repair and make a video out of. And, well, here's that Switch Lite. So as you can tell, I couldn't get it fixed. I spent a lot of time troubleshooting, tested for shorts around the ICs, checked the USB-C charging port, nothing seemed out of place. Reached out online to a few people to try to see if we could figure out what was going on, and unfortunately, we were stuck. This appears to be running into that dreaded constant charging issue, uh, where if the battery is not fully charged, it will charge at about 0.46 amps. Once the battery charges, it does drop down to about 0.2 amps, but nothing ever happens after that. It will sit there at 0.2 amps and do nothing. The power button doesn't work, you can't get any life from it. It doesn't seem to try to boot up to the second stage boot or beyond. So I finally gave up on this switch light decided not to put it out as a video just because I couldn't get it fixed. So I hopped onto eBay again and bought another switch light. And here's that Nintendo switch light. And as you can see, this one works just fine. This one was an easy fix and I also decided it probably wasn't worth making a video out of. But the issue with this one was that it was listed as broken, not working. Open it up to take a look at it and what had happened was somebody had opened it up. I don't know why they were in it to begin with, but while they were in there they had ripped off the battery connector off the motherboard completely. So of course the battery wouldn't charge, the system wouldn't work. A few dollars and another purchase later, I replaced the battery connector on the motherboard, soldered it in works like a champ. So because that was such an easy fix, I didn't really think it was worth making a video out of that one as well. So for the third time, I bought another Nintendo Switch Lite on eBay, and here that one is. Also listed as broken, no power, doesn't work. So I'm hoping for the third time we can actually get a good fix on one of these and make a good video out of it. So with that, let's go ahead and move to the workbench and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So here we have our Nintendo Switch Lite. This came all the way from Japan, so I'm actually really impressed at how well they packaged this in here. This came in a box wrapped up in a bunch of paper and then a whole bunch of bubble wrap. Let's go ahead and open this up. It looks like they wrapped it in plastic wrap as well. Which is great packaging for a broken system. So here we are. It doesn't look too bad. It looks like maybe at one point uh, something chipped it here in the corner. Overall, it doesn't seem too bad. Obviously, there's going to be some marks in the corners and so forth, which I guess isn't a huge deal for me. I'm thinking if I can get this working, I would like to replace the shell on this one, probably with an extreme rate shell. I really like their products. So I'm not too worried about some of the bumpers and buttons and so forth on here, but it does look to be in pretty good condition. Really no scratches on the screen. Well, it may be a little bit dusty. Let's see, do we have a game cartridge? <laughs> nope, no luck. Uh, what about an SD card? Nope, empty too. All right, not a huge deal. So let's see if we can power it on. Let's just see if it does happen to work. Hold it down for five seconds or so, and still nothing. So it definitely is dead. It doesn't look like it's ever actually been opened. Not sure how well those screws are gonna come across in the video. Uh, all the screws look like they're here. The tri wings on the back, the Phillips on the top. And the two tri wings on the bottom, nothing looks out of place, but you probably want to take a look at that USB-C charging port. I do know that is a common failure on these. Uh, they get smashed up. I can't tell by looking at it, but it looks like maybe there's a few pins out of place. So let's grab the microscope and take a look and see if we can see what's going on in there. So to take a look at the charging port, I am going to have to dangle the microscope off the edge. It does not raise up high enough to be able to see it on the stand, but that's okay. I can just dangle it off the edge and take a look and get everything into focus. And I do believe I can already see our problem. So if I look at the charging port in here, if I try to keep it into focus, I do see three pins that are smashed up against the edge of the charging port. And if I remember correctly, the pin on the far right is a ground pin, but the two in the middle, the one that is fourth from the right and the other that happens to be fourth from the left, those are both VBUS pins. So those are both going to contain a full 5 volts and is causing a direct 5 volt short against the shell, which obviously is not good. If I flip it around to look at the other side of the connector, that appears to be fine, but we can still see those three pins are definitely smashed up and are definitely going to be a cause of this thing not charging and not powering up. So that's probably not going to be too big of a problem at least to replace the charging port itself. Now the bigger question is if those caused a direct short, if those damaged some of the internal ICs, like the M92 chip or the B something chip that's, uh, I'm drawing a blank on that at the moment. Uh, if those are shorted, we will have to replace those ICs as well. 
I don't know, I guess we'll get into it, try to get this port off, and then we'll be able to see at that point if we have shorts and what we need to do to further fix this system. So there is a problem with trying to fix this, and that is that I will probably want to use a hot air station to try to remove this charging port off the Nintendo Switch Lite. I could probably try to do this with a soldering iron, but I'm afraid I'd damage some of the components around it, I'll potentially rip off pads. I don't want to do that. So I'll want to use a hot air station to remove this. Now the problem is, I don't have a hot air station. I've never actually used one before, so when I bought it, I also went ahead and bought one of these, which, if I move this out of the way, it's just a small SMD uh, practice board. I guess in the end it does some little LED flashing and so forth, but it comes with a ton of very small components. You're not particularly meant to use a hot air station with this. The instructions talk about how to solder all these small components with a soldering iron, but I wanted to get some practice with the hot air station, so I went ahead Practiced with this, uh, did this whole thing with a hot air station, including some ICs, and I think it worked well. So hopefully I am ready to go with the hot air station and the USB-C charging port. To do that, we first need to remove the outer case, obviously to get to it. You can see here, I've still got some screws. These are for the other switch light uh, that I could not get working, but I'm still leaving those here. Hopefully I'll be able to get around to that and get that fixed. But in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and work with this one. So to start with, we have two Phillips screws here and here on the top, as well as two Phillips screws on the bottom and four tri-wing screws in each corner. And then from here, just a small spudger tool. Usually helps to put it down in the speaker area. What I found out is just putting it in and twisting it a little bit to help initially pop some of those clips just like that. There we go. We got it. So in this next step, we're going to go ahead and remove one, two, three, four screws out of here. There we are. Well, we're here. Let's go ahead and check the voltage on this battery real quick. Let's so kind of put this in frame here. And yeah, the battery is completely dead. So if that does become a problem with the battery being fully discharged, I do have a replacement battery. So worst case, we can go ahead and swap that battery out if we need to. But for now, we will continue. So it looks like this has not ever been opened up before. Taking a look here, if you can see it in the video, uh, this foam here doesn't look like it's been disturbed at all, which is also good. I mean, somebody hasn't been in here trying to fix this. But before we do anything else, let's go ahead and Remove this ribbon cable and unplug the battery. So now with our battery disconnected, we can go ahead. The next step is gonna to be to remove this heat sink here. And for the heat sink, we have three screws. They're all down here attached at the bottom. So we're gonna move these three. And now we need to remove this uh, trigger assembly here. There are just two screws, and this whole piece will come off. And we'll remove this. And next, we're going to go ahead and remove the cartridge slot. Now this one, I don't know why it feels like it's excessive, but there are, and I'm probably going to miscount to, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws just for holding the uh, game cart slot uh, as well as the uh, audio jack. and remove the ribbon cable from there. And then the whole thing will just slide out. I'll hold that up to the side. And then from here, we just have a bunch of ribbon cables and antennas to remove. Nope, oh, and we have this little membrane piece that sometimes comes off, sometimes doesn't come off when you remove the bumper piece. Let's get that out of there. Almost forgot one really tiny fan connector. Pull that out too. So now from here we have six more screws. We have one here, 
two down here on the USB-C port, and then we have one, two, three on here, and I believe that is it. Again, just being careful of all of the ribbon cables, uh, antenna cables, all that, as we slide this board out. And there we go. So now we have our motherboard and the USB-C charging cable is right here. And this is what we're gonna work to remove. Now, I can't necessarily use the hot air gun on the top just because we have the plastic connector here and I don't wanna melt that. The bottom is pretty clear all around it. So what I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna put some uh, leaded solder, mix that into here just to make it so it melts at a little bit of a lower temperature and will hopefully make it a little easier to remove. Again, this is my first time trying to do this. So hopefully it works out. And we'll go ahead and put just a little bit on these pins as well. And I do not have my helping hands. I have no idea where that's at. So hopefully we can just do this a little bit off the table here and it should still work. So I'm gonna use my hot air station. I have it at 460 and about medium airflow just to get enough heat. I can see that here. Again, it's just a really cheap uh, Yihua brand one. So hopefully if I can just hold this off the table, we'll be able to make this work. So I'm gonna just start heating up around the surface. I want to get the board. Actually, you know what? I'm going to also go ahead and turn on the fume extractor. So hopefully the microphone will still pick it up. You can tell the board is hot because the flex is immediately melting. So that's good. There we go. All right, so I know this isn't done as well as I've seen others do it online, but I think for what I'm trying to do, I think it'll work. So what I need to do at this point is I need to check for shorts. I'm hoping we're not gonna have shorts around either of these two boards here. So I'm gonna grab the microscope. And we have two ICs that we're gonna look at for shorts. Now hopefully neither of these have shorts on them. So to test that, I'm gonna put my meter in continuity. And I actually think that we are in luck. It does not look like we have any shorts on this board. So now what we need to do is basically the opposite of what we've just done. So just a real little bit of flux. That was probably too much. And we have our replacement USB-C connectors. Now, I did buy the one specifically for the switch light. Uh, you can buy regular switch USB-C connectors and then you just need to file down uh, the ends of them. Um, but I went ahead and just bought these. They were maybe twice as much, but that's still an extra like dollar or two to do that. Not a huge deal. I do want to pre-tin these pins, which are really tiny, but there are two sets of pins. I want to go ahead and pre-tin those just so they will make better contact. And there we are. And to the opposite of what we just did, I think we did it. Let's go ahead and check real quick on the microscope. And the board is a little hot. So I think maybe we're good. So let's go ahead and move the microscope again. And I do, I think, want to just run real quick the iron just over these pins just to make sure. And I do think maybe we are good. So while the board is still warm, let's go ahead 
clean residual flux off of here. And let's just see if this worked. So after spending a considerable amount of time on this, here's where we're at right now. So as you can see, we do have a new USB-C charging port on here. Uh, since the last part of the video, I realized, let's see which one of these is, all right, so this one, which is probably not gonna focus well, this is the original charging port that was on here that has the smashed pins uh, that we looked at earlier. I swapped that one out with this charging port here. After putting this one on, uh, which is where the last part of the video ended, I realized that I did not do a good job trying to solder this in and accidentally ended up melting uh, the inner part of this connector and obviously it would not work. So after spending a lot of time trying to get this first connector replaced, what I ended up doing a second time, which unfortunately I did not get on the video, but rather than trying to remove the solder and put new solder on and everything else, I just heated up the connector, removed it off, and while the board was still hot, went ahead and sat the new connector in its place, and that worked way better than what I was trying to do the first time. So I did successfully get the connector replaced the second time, and it seemed like it was installed correctly. Uh, however, in doing so, <laughs> After I flipped the board over, I realized I had messed up some of the small components on the board surrounding the USB-C charging port. So let's go ahead and get this under a microscope just to take a look at this a little bit closer. So if I get this board under the microscope, actually it's actually zoomed in too far here. Let's move it up just a little bit. And we can see the USB-C connector. Now one of the things you'll notice, unfortunately, is uh, I have melted part of the uh, plastic on the connector itself. This wasn't caused by me originally installing the connector. However, like I said, I accidentally bumped some uh, components when I did so, and those are gonna be down here. So one of the things I did, and I didn't realize it when I was trying to heat up the board, was that uh, I bumped the board with the nozzle on the hot air station, which knocked a couple of these loose. So I knocked loose uh, this guy here, as well as the, I believe this is the capacitor here, these were knocked loose uh, way off out of the side. I also knocked loose uh, this really small uh, BGA chip right here. And I also actually knocked off completely this really small capacitor right here, which it's even hard to try to point to it on here because it's so small, this guy right here. Now, if I can, do it, I'm gonna try to get a small grain of salt here. I guess this will work. So I have one small grain of salt attached to the bottom of my, uh, my tweezers right here. As you can see, the small grain of salt is actually about the exact same size as that capacitor. So these things are incredibly small. And unfortunately, I knocked it off when I was trying to replace this connector. So to solve this problem, I actually took this capacitor off of the other motherboard uh, from the first Nintendo Switch Lite that I said I bought that I couldn't get working. And somehow was able to actually get that off of the board, moved over here, and soldered into place. And let me tell you, that was a chore. Um, <laughs> I'm impressed with those of you who do this uh, much more often because that was so much work trying to very carefully make sure I didn't lose it and somehow successfully transfer it from the other board over to this one, as well as get it installed in place. Uh, that, that was a lot of work. Uh, I did manage to get it though, and it seems like it's installed correctly. And also one of the other things that I noticed, I'll bring it up here, if I can at least get it into view. This is the uh, 17050, I believe this is the fuel gauge chip that was originally on this board. Uh, I've done some testing since then and I couldn't get the board booted, so I swapped out that chip uh, with the same one off of the other board and installed that here as well. Um, there you go, we can kind of see it a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if this one's bad. I mean, we can clearly see a lot of the plastic or a lot of the material around the edge is cracked on it, so I don't know if I broke that, but I went ahead and swapped it with the one from the other board. Then went ahead and got everything else cleaned up uh, as much as I could and everything else seems like it's all in place. So from here, I have tested uh, all around the BQ chip, uh, which is what I was drawing a blank on when I first started this. 
as well as the M92 chip. Uh, none of these capacitors have any shorts. Everything seems fine. However, this board appears to be in the same state as the first motherboard, which is that it gets into a constant charging state and um, doesn't seem to boot after that. Uh, it does properly charge the battery. I can verify the battery voltage has gone up and it does drop the charge once the battery reaches 4.2 volts. However, this will not boot uh, beyond that. So unfortunately, even after replacing that small BGA chip, the microscopically small uh, capacitor, and moving the other component back into its place, it still doesn't seem to be working right. It seems to be stuck in the same state as the first switch light, which is just that it constantly charges, but won't actually boot up the system. So with that, move the microscope out of the way. I do think it's time to just put this back together and put it to rest. Um, I will test it here real quick and just show without anything connected that it does actually charge, or that it does actually look like it's charging. You can see right now it's charging at uh, 0.6 amps and it is charging at 15 volts. So the USB-C connector does seem to be working right and I can move it to the other side and we can confirm the same thing on this side, 15 volts in this case 0.06 amps and again obviously there's no battery connected so this is actually charging but again it's not actually resetting and then starting up like it should be doing so with that let's go ahead and put it all back together just to see if it all does end up working when we're done all right now we have this all back together let's give it one final shot with the charging cable and just see if it works And we can see we're charging uh, 0.49 amps. It's probably dropped a little bit. It was fully charged last night when I was taking a look at it. But unfortunately, no charging light showing here. And if I flip the charging cable over, you can't see on the back side it is charging. But again, no charging light. And I can try to power it on. Even try to hold it down for 15 seconds. And nothing, unfortunately. So I think I'm going to have to call this system unfixable, at least at least for me. I don't know what else I can do to try to get this thing working. Uh, again, change the charging port. Again, we can confirm that that is good and it is properly charging. Uh, confirm that the battery is charging. Uh, I didn't show it on camera. I did test the voltage on the battery, make sure that it's properly charging, and then it capped out at 4.2 volts. Uh, but this is where we stand. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this system fixed. So unfortunately, I was unable to get this Nintendo Switch Lite fixed. However, with every failed attempt comes an opportunity to learn and to grow. And I think I learned quite a bit from trying this out. In the end, I was successfully able to replace the USB-C port on this board. Even after knocking some components loose while doing so, I was able to get them back where they needed to be on the board and even transplanted some that I couldn't find from a different motherboard as well. I was even able to transplant a ridiculously small capacitor from the other motherboard, and it was smaller than the size of a single grain of salt. So I was pretty proud of being able to do that. So while I wasn't able to fix it, I am happy with what I learned while doing so, and I can take that knowledge and use it on future repairs. In addition, I also have spare parts that I can use off of this for those future repairs. We learn and grow by trying and by doing. As long as it's not expensive or irreplaceable, it doesn't hurt to try to do something like this. At best, you'll succeed, but at worst, you'll learn something along the way while doing so. If you have any ideas on what I should look at on a revisit with this system, let me know. I still want to get it fixed. I feel like it should still be fixable. I just don't know what I need to do next. So if you have ideas, please let me know, and I would be happy to look at this in a future video. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.